to make sure they do their job, the Scorpions build 1,000 missiles. <laughs> Let's fire them. Alright, so the other day during the stream, you caught me watching a whole long video that was more than an hour long on the history of the whole of the Earth by Kurskasad. And I was initially thinking about making a reaction video on it and uh, perhaps also talking about some of the funniest things and uh, pulling up one of the big boys here. Bam! Just to talk about rocks. Yeah, this is an old book. I haven't taken that much care of it. I'm sorry. You get like one course of geology in university and you get hooked. I understand why geologists like to uh, <laughs> play with rocks. <laughs> But I think that there's a much more interesting video here. This one is, of course, provided to us again by Kurskasad, the herald of our doom, who has this wonderful tendency of uh, weekly reminding us of, uh, at least giving us, existential crises. So this is World War Aliens, How to Win an Interstellar War. It sounds interesting and I want to watch it, so uh, let's jump into it. Be prepared to make contact. Our new limited drop has landed, only on the Kurskasad shop. Could aliens destroy us from light years away? Yes. Hmm. Another day at the Kurzgesagt Labs. Well, pretty short answer. Yes, they would. If they have mastered faster than light travel and if they have the foresight of being able to predict where we are going to be at, they definitely would. But also there's the big question of if it is such an advanced civilization, depending on what category you want to stretch it out to be, uh, would they even care about us? But I'm guessing that that premise is not considered here since we are actually engaging in war with them. We answer the most important questions with science. Today, how might civilizations wage war across light years? Ooh. What kind of devastating weapons could they use? And what would they look like? Meet our two players. A yellow dwarf Ash. star system home to a species of primates. Okay, we've lost the war. If Ash Ketchum is supposed to be a uh, representative, no, one of the worst Pokemon trainers ever. <laughs> okay, we're doomed. Humans, as they call themselves, recently became a technological civilization. They have rockets, nuclear reactors, and memes. How cute. Yeah. <laughs> the Scorpions disagree. They reside on a planet around the orange dwarf star HD 40307, 42 light years away. The Scorpion okay. civilization developed earlier than humans, and they have much better technology. They've recently built a Dyson swarm around their star, which gives them near limitless energy. Oh, like a Dyson sphere, yeah. A nice thing in the changing of the names. Okay, that's powerful. I'm quickly pausing here to address at least the gamers amongst you who might want to experience something with Dyson Spheres. Uh, there's a literal game, uh, one of my favorite called the Dyson Sphere program. Just for reference, I couldn't help myself but from showing it to you, but it kind of looks like this. And what I'm inside right now is a Dyson Sphere. That is basically the star that we built our Dyson Sphere around. And yeah, you can just imagine how massive at least what they call a Dyson Swarm, might look like. It's a good representation. It's, of course, not like a one-to-one -one thing because we don't exactly know how that's supposed to be looking like. We've never built anything of the source. And as you can see here, every single one of the panels on the Dyson Sphere has a certain amount of energy that it generates. This one is uh, generating about 2.4 gigawatts, and that's the sum total of five, 550. Now, to put that in perspective, uh, to power one of the biggest metropolitan cities in the world, uh, New York City, for example, you are going to need, I think, 5.5 um, megawatts, which is, oh, no, 5,000 megawatts, which is about 5.5 gigawatts. So just one of those panels could be powering the whole of New York per hour. That's insane. And the amount of power that uh, the aliens they were about to face are generating is definitely bigger because, again, this is a an actual smaller star. A younger one, but still a smaller star. And they noticed humanity, which is unfortunate as the Scorpions are planning a hyperspace bypass through our solar system. <laughs> so they decided that humanity has to go. <laughs> Interstellar war is hard, though. Front lines, tactics, and logistics are meaningless at these scales. It's also fought across time. Yeah. Decades will pass between firing a weapon 
and learning whether it hit or not. Sending an invasion fleet is futile. Even if the Scorpions travel at a large fraction of It'll the speed of light, the journey to Earth would take decades or even centuries. We would give us enough time to anticipate, but will we even be able to fight against them with the technology that we have? And also very cute that everything looks like birds. And humans would have plenty of time to prepare. If you want to learn more about the mind-numbing problem of war between alien civilizations, oh. we made a video about it. Okay. Today, we'll help the Smorpions construct a weapon that is not only extremely long-range and as fast as physically possible, but that will totally destroy everything on Earth. <laughs> so, no human survivors will come to enact vengeance on Smorp in the future. In interstellar war, you want to win with one shot. Our bird scientists have found three Smorpion designs, the Star Laser, the Relativistic Missile, and the Ultra-Relativistic Electron Beam. <laughs> the least unlikely. <laughs> yeah, when we're diving into ultra-relativistic things, we're talking about things that are moving faster than the speed of light, at least approximating to the speed of light, not faster. All based on real technologies that humans are using in some form already. Let's see how they work. All right. The Star Laser. Why? As an advanced technological Green. civilization, the Scorpions harness the energy of their star by surrounding it with billions of solar power satellites. This Dyson Swarm collects 1% of the star's energy output, a million, billion, billion watts. Ooh. Yeah, uh, we're done. <laughs> 50 billion times more than all humanity generates. What if all the power of the Dyson Swarm, all those satellites, were used to create a star laser? Like any laser, the bigger it is, the longer its range. Yeah. Schumann-built lasers use small mirrors to focus, so they have short ranges. Indeed. The Scorpions could turn their entire Dyson Swarm into a collective focusing element a million kilometers wide. The star laser has an insane range as a result, enough to focus on target Earth from a distance of over 2 million light years. Oh, that's wonderful. Could you imagine if NASA had the budget of making something like that with, uh, like, <laughs> I'm dreaming here, NASA will never get that large of a budget. Like, James Webb cost $10 billion to create, right? That's about a quarter of the budget that NASA has yearly, which is something that has increased over the years, right? It's, I think it started really taking off since 2018. Uh, so yeah, they, they do have some money, but it's not nearly enough. By the way, I'm not trying to push some uh, propaganda of, uh, oh, we should all demonstrate to make sure that NASA gets more funding, okay? They are happy with what they have, although they could use more. But just to put that in perspective, it's around 25 billion that they had this year, or was it the last? I think it's this year. Um, that's about a half of a percent of the annual, uh, this the US budget. So yeah, it's not much. Okay, let's shoot it. Countless tiny beams combine into a single huge beam. Laser beams are normally invisible in space, but the star laser is so powerful that light scattering off bits of dust and gas in its path makes it clearly visible in the sky. I like the choice of green is the one that it went with. I mean, one could argue that just like <laughs> the way that the sun is green, yes, the sun is actually green if you want to argue that it's not yellow, it's white. And if you wanted to push further into the actual terminology that's get used by astrophysicists when we're talking about heavenly bodies, um, it's a black body spectrum. So it's <laughs> technically black. We say that obviously because we are all encompassing the whole of the visual spectrum, but because we humans, uh, at least primates like us, decided to, not decided, but evolutionary evolved to have three receptors or what they called color sensing cones in our eyes, the RGB code, right? Red, blue, and green. So if we want to be very precise, it is green because the peak um, radiation of the sun emits wavelengths at around 15, uh, I want to say micrometers, or it might be lower than that. I'm remember, I might be remembering wrong. And that is in the green spectrum or green part of the spectrum. Now I'm saying all of these different colors just to make you realize that uh, colors 
don't exist naturally. It's all in here. A gigantic column of green light. The laser travels at the speed of light, which oddly enough is still pretty slow on a galactic level. It takes a whole day until the laser has left the Scorpion system, <laughs> shooting into the emptiness between stars. Hey! It will travel for decades. Hey, that's a slave one. Melting the odd bit of interstellar dust or asteroid. Forty-two years. I'm sorry, I'm pausing a lot here, but um, question: How was it again that the slave one managed to to land? As far as I remember, in series like, um, oh, what's the latest one? A Boba Fett or a Mandalorian. Like, they take off that way, where they're in space, right? Or dock to a base or something. And then they land flat. Oh, the seed rotates. Of course, of course the seed rotates. <laughs> Years after being fired, it arrives without warning. Humans only notice a weird green glow in the sky, and then they're gone. 1% of the energy of a star concentrated into a beam the diameter of Earth traveling 42 light years. Yeah. It burns the exposed half of the planet with the intensity of 3 million suns. <laughs> the seas boil and evaporate, fires scour the land, and within minutes, Earth's crust begins to melt into a sea of lava. Oof. As the planet rotates, it turns into a red hot hell with no trace of life. After a day, it's all over and the laser dies down. In another 42 years, the Scorpions will know if they've been successful. Yeah, that's the other aspect of it, right? They'll need to be just like um, the aliens from that one movie with not Natalie Portman. That's Annihilation. Although it would be fitting with the name at least. No, Arrival with uh, Amy Adams and uh, Raider <laughs> Hawkeye. That's another thing about Interstellar War. When you attack, your grandchildren will be the ones to find out if you won. It's like all the bombs from World War II exploding in the 80s and us only seeing the effect today. I mean... Okay, it's... the star laser's extreme range, speed of light attack, and ability to melt down any target make it a premier interstellar weapon. But it... You could argue that that is actually already what we are experiencing, right? Well, if you were to philosophize about it, that uh, what's the saying that the sins of her father should not be passed on to the sons. That all the things, we, we are only just experiencing the aftermath of uh, all the bombs that were dropped. Is there something else? The relativistic missile. What if instead of converting the energy of their Dyson Swarm into a laser, the Scorpions used it to shoot a super bullet? A hey. relativistic missile going as close to the speed of light as possible. This sort Magnets. of weapon is at the limits of what the Scorpions' technology can handle, as it requires loads of a highly dangerous material, antimatter, the evil twin of reg. Oh wow! Okay, now we're d diving into a modding of uh, <laughs> Kerbal Space Program here. We've dealt with that before. <laughs> If you're new to the channel, uh, there's uh, this wonderful YouTuber called Mountain City Opens that is um, uh, at least that made a series on the Kerbal Space Program video game. I highly recommend to check that out. I also have reactions videos on it on the channel if you want to watch that. But yeah, uh, there's an instance where he engages in that. We don't exactly break down exactly what anti-meta is. I gotta admit, I uh, it's not my field of expertise. But yeah, through the process of, again, annihilation that I <laughs> mentioned before, uh, you can achieve quite the insane amount of power. Regular matter. Humans have only managed to produce a few nanograms of antimatter. With their unlimited energy, Scorpions can manufacture it at an industrial scale to build antimatter rockets. Oh yeah. When antimatter and matter are mixed, they annihilate, which in more practical terms means there's a big, big boom releasing gamma rays and plasma. Yep. The physics is complicated, but basically, if you have a really strong magnetic nice field, nozzle, you can deflect the plasma through a nozzle, just like in the chemical rockets humans use. But it would be much, much faster. The fastest rocket possibly, basically. Our relativistic missile is much bigger than a skyscraper. At the bottom is the bell-shaped magnetic nozzle 100 meters wide. On top of it are 250 floors filled with antimatter and matter ready to annihilate each other. On the top floor is a 300 Just kilogram projectile looking quite small, about the size of a person. To stop them getting damaged on the way, the missiles have dozens of sacrificial layers that form a Whipple shield. 
Yeah, okay, yeah. I was about to say, uh, the, the the bullet having that much momentum will be just ignited by the smallest grain of sand. At least that's, that's what I could factor in here. So, yeah, sure, they have shields to protect it from going off before it actually hits its target. To make sure they do their job, the Smorpions build 1,000 missiles. <laughs> Let's fire them. Launching all the relative. Okay, okay, that was the thing that they mentioned at the start of the video. I did not even realize that. Okay, wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they will hit something, that's for sure. Sophistic missiles is a spectacular event. For a moment, the antimatter engines lighting up outshine their star. Wow. Their exhaust is a long trail of brilliant white, and as they accelerate away, they appear redder and redder until they turn invisible. Red shifting. With the extreme amount of energy released by the matter-antimatter reactions, the missiles are accelerated to 99.9999996% of the speed of light. They have effectively infinite range as there's nothing really to slow them down. <laughs> they arrive shortly after you. I don't know how much buzz uh, fits with it, but uh... <laughs> yeah. We're not aiming for the truck. You can see them. The light from their launch will take 42 years to reach Earth. So human astronomers might see the flash of the missile's launch, and then a few days later, they'll hit. Not enough time to prepare. No. Each relativistic missile packs the kinetic energy of a dinosaur killer asteroid. Ugh. So only one needs to hit. They never reach the ground. They're just in the atmosphere. Instead, at the edge of Earth's atmosphere. Intense blue flashes set everything on fire. Then, continent-sized fireballs slam down on the surface to smash everything into dust, repeatedly, until nothing is left but rubble and smoke. So, interstellar missiles with unlimited range, minimal warning, and delivering complete destruction of a planet's surface. Nice. This is what I imagine that some Pokémons will want to do when they just get too tired of, yeah, trainers going after them. We must rebel. We must fight against our overlords. <laughs> but they are a hassle to build. Mm. Is there something else, maybe? The ultra-relativistic electron beam. Humans do funny things to their food to rid it of bacteria and make it safe to eat, like shooting electron beams at strawberries. Small particle accelerators send electrons into the food to purify with energy it. similar to the radiation from nuclear reactions. I am so happy to see a big channel, a big channel, of, well, one of their size, actually tackling this issue. It's something that sometimes gets a bit infuriating, that I understand there's a lot of discussion of uh, how a lot of our food are manufactured, the things that, that literal expert that are sitting there around tables and figuring out what taste, that is, what combinations of chemicals they need to include uh, to trigger your taste buds to make you addicted to certain foods. It's tragic, but it's a literal thing. And I don't know if it is by hearing news about things like that that causes the mistrust that some people have in like the practices for the cleanliness of food, but this is literally just to make things safer for us to consume. Not enough to burn the food, but deadly to bacteria. Smorpions had the same idea, but bigger. <laughs> The main challenge with an electron beam is range. Electrons are negatively charged particles, so they don't want to stay near each other. Yeah. A regular electron beam will quickly spread out, making it harmless. Smorpions need it to cover distances of dozens of light years. So they've used the rules of the universe to trick the electrons Ooh, that's a by long building one. an ultra-relativistic electron beam, or UREB. What it does is accelerate the electrons to 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
The Smorpions need one that's over 100,000 kilometers long, a megastructure eight times longer than Earth is wide. It's mostly a tube of magnets holding the beam together until the exit. Like a long trumpet of doom surrounded by an aura of deadly radiation. That's mad. When it's fired, it produces a ruler straight lightning bolt pointed at Earth. Its effects on arrival are less visible than the other weapons. It's cooking us from the no inside. Of light, no massive firestorms, no explosions. Wow. It doesn't destroy rocks, it destroys DNA. People get dizzy, then fall sick as their cells are pierced by radiation. You Ooh. might think that a deep bunker could save a few humans. No, but no, it passes through. The Europe is so penetrating that its effects accumulate to lethal doses even underground over days or weeks. In the end, just like our strawberries, Earth becomes sterile. Yeah, we are the bacteria. <laughs> Simulation results. Hmm, another elaborate animated science explainer by Kotzkazat where we've learned a lot. Not sure exactly what. Luckily, the Smorpions don't really exist, but others might. One major downside of all our weapons is that others around the Milky Way could see you firing them, which is not ideal because you don't want to present yourself as a dangerous species and tell everybody where exactly you are. <laughs> so maybe Sus. instead of shouting or shooting out into the universe, the best course of action seems to be to stay relatively quiet for now and observe. Maybe one day we'll witness distant stars shooting at each other and be glad we stayed out of it. Yeah. But we don't have to stay out of intergalactic fun. There's a peaceful way to join Type 2 civilizations on their galactic adventures. Look, it's the Galactic Club, a cozy corner in the vast universe reserved for friendly, quirky folk like you. <laughs> Come in and don't worry, we've got everything you need to fit right in. It's all part of our latest limited drop. Kill your alien friends with kindness and impress them with these colorful patches and sweaters. Wear these new iconic t-shirts that represent your love of stargazing. Oh. And show allegiance to our ultimate overlord deck. And the, <laughs> the star of the show, a woven space blanket to wrap yourself and your new alien buddies in. Maybe the coolest thing we've ever created. Definitely the largest. Wow. Like with our last limited drop, these items are available now until they sell out. Wow, that was super fun. The the one thing that I wish, at least if we were to be attacked by aliens, is that they are the types from like War of the World, where we can simply defeat them with dust. That would be great. <laughs> that would be absolutely awesome. <laughs> like the giant space Roombas weren't prepared for our dust particles. It's too powerful. But yeah, that, that would be great. 